So a little bit of background for y'all people right now who are tuning in. I have no clue what's going on. So on this one, we're doing it a little bit different. So instead of me and Chris being on the couch, it's just Chris on the couch. So um, as you probably heard prior, we're going to ask Chris questions. Um, questions that I kind of came up with. Some I searched up just to get the, the things kind of flowing. And then I'm asking him a question so that he could decipher his own train of thought, and then we can have like a deeper discussion based on Chris. So that way, you guys get to know us a little bit better. You know, um, I realize like you know we've been going actually pretty strong. We actually like 40, 40 plus episodes in already. That's crazy. We have like forty plus videos up already. So the consistency has been not short at all. It's been going, going, going. It has not stopped. Two videos a week, every single week since we started. So this is gonna give you guys a little bit of overview, you know, more into what you see. So this this will probably look a lot better in the podcast, as maybe for you know, still in the video. Some people just like to watch video regardless. So, uh, you know, we like to take advantage of every platform that we can. Yeah, yeah. So sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> All right, man. So look, let's start simple, 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 right? If you can go any place on earth, well, I probably know this, but you know, just so people, if you can go any place on earth, what would it be? Italy. Why? Okay, I think Italy is the perfect combination of history. Wait, wait. Just, just a quick. I forgot. It's nighttime, so we get even more planes. We get even more planes. Bear with us, guys. Until we get a studio, we're gonna deal with these airplane noises. Alright, go ahead. So Italy is the perfect uh, combination of history, food, culture, fashion, right, and ambience. What I mean by that? You can go from Rome. To a little villa in like 35 minutes. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like, you know, and, and I could drive my Fiat out there. And I could yeah, be looking yeah. at, you know, I'd be chilling yeah, out there. Blend in plus, there. plus yeah. the fashion there is crazy. Um, the food there is amazing. Yeah. If you know me, me and Italian food go way back. Yeah. Like, you know, and the history, like the Roman Empire, and just think about all of that crazy things, you know, the Leading Tower of Pisa, and all this other stuff is like, it's amazing. And so that, I, for me, Italy has like the everything. Yeah, that, that that's only like your actual goal in life. Yeah. To My goal is actually to live there for a year. Yeah. Which before, be... before like I settle down like real hard. Yeah, like, yeah. My goal is to be there for a year. For a year. Okay. Dope. 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 All right. So, if you had to pick, not one, because it's maybe not you know total, but let's say the one that pops up your head first, funniest moment, your last funniest moment. It could be in school, it well, could be whatever. My last one is moment, I can't explain it fully. And I'm not going to give it all. But George is laughing because he knows what I'm going to say. But, uh, you know, I'm blessed, man. I get to do things that I, I honestly, I, I, I always tell George this, maybe you guys don't hear this conversation. But I also George that I could have never prayed or planned a better life for myself. You know, like, I grew up in Honduras, you guys don't know that. I, I was raised there till I was 10. And so, you know, a life I get to live is crazy, bro. Like, even people who born here don't got the opportunity that I got. You know, and, and so, uh, but yeah, my funniest moment is, <laughs> honestly, it's just George rubbing his head. Like, I know it will make no sense to you guys, but he's laughing because he knows what I mean. But this dude was literally doing this. Bro, nothing has ever felt this good. Yo, now, I think you get yeah, it with some people. Some people gonna be like, okay, I know what's going on here, bro. And so that honestly, I've never seen no one do that in my life. Oh, no. I could not. I lost my voice just of laughing. Oh, like man. just of laughing. I don't like, know if it was too much like, wine that like, night. Like, I don't, I don't like, know. It was like it Comedy Central special of him just rubbing his head. He couldn't stop me. You know, I don't want to do this because I like my hair the way it is. But he has a flat top. You can see his head. Well, so I'm he just sure. like, he was just rubbing What's the good? whole What's thing. Good? He was like. Oh man, that, that was, was that was definitely that was probably great. my last funny moment. To that, was that was That was really that really was funny. Amazing. Either that one or this morning with the whole roasting. Oh, oh so I was crying. First of all, I'm pretty sure so he's practicing because he wants to get hired. He yeah. wants to get a job. Yeah. Yo, Eddie was going in. I was like, Yo, what's up with this guy right now? And <laughs> I was like, First of all, I'm gonna lie. I was looking at both of you and I was like, Yo, why don't you guys type normal? Like, why can't you guys type like me? That's that's exactly. What I was, I'm I'm looking like, hold up, Eddie. Like, yo, none of this is making grammatical sense right now. This is only thing I got on here. <laughs> but it's <laughs> getting funny. Yeah. So that um, was that was so funny. Yeah. But all right, man. So essentially, 
like you gave some some insights to that some of us that don't know. So you did come from Honduras, right? So um, when you were ten, you came here. You, you're now twenty four. So you've been living here for fourteen years. Yeah. Um, you, um, as far as we know, your education. What's that like? Man, honestly, uh, I graduated from FIU uh, last year. I got I graduated. You know, I don't say this to boast. You know that. Yeah. But I graduated. I always say it to give people hope. I graduated with two degrees. Yeah. Um, neither of those degrees was my plan. Yeah. <laughs> like I have planned to graduate with a history degree, but if you are a history major, you know why you don't graduate with a history major yeah. degree. You know. Just so, uh, but actually, um, uh, you know, I'm not saying like the life I have for me is I can't, I couldn't pray for this life. I couldn't ask. I couldn't dream for this life. So I I came from Honduras. And uh, I was 10. I got here in fifth grade. Obviously, if you've ever been here and you came from a different country, you know the vaccines and all that crap you need to do before you get to school is a hassle. Yeah. So I didn't start school till like a month after everybody had already started. Fifth grade. Mm-hmm. I went to Citrus Grove Elementary. If you know about it, you know. <laughs> if you don't know about it, you don't know. You know? And so that was the last time I was in the hood, to be honest with you guys. But uh, I went to Citrus Grove. And I remember that I said, like, a couple of days of being there, uh, you know, people are hearing me, like, you know, I, 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 I'm honestly, I'm, I talk a lot and I'm loud, but if you know me, you only know, I'm only like that with the people I know. Yeah. In public, like, with people I don't know, I'm very quiet. Like, people will normally say, Chris, you're not very friendly, which is the opposite of what my friends would say, yeah. right? Because I, I'm shy in that sense, which is crazy, but whatever. So I, I remember being in fifth grade, especially when I was younger, you know, when you, you, you just don't got it. I was not that guy. Like, I was not open. I was not brave. I was dirty. And scared and whatever. So in fifth grade, I remember I finally started speaking to my teachers. They were asking me questions. Yeah. And I remember my teacher, Ms. Zimmerman, goes, you speak English? And I'm like, yes. And she goes, how do you speak English? And I was like, like everybody else with my mouth. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't understand the question. Yeah. She's like, but didn't you just come from Honduras? And I was like, yes. She's like, but you speak English. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's because I, I was in Honduras. I'm telling you, my life was privileged in Honduras as well. So I learned English in Honduras. I was, I still have a strong accent, you know, but I learned that the language. I was able to speak it fluently, understand it well. Yeah. So she picks me up, like she literally says, "Come with me." She goes to a different teacher in a different class and goes, "He speaks English," and the teacher's like puzzled. She's like, "Okay, so does everybody else here." Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's one of the stories I vividly remember you telling me. Yeah, man, and, and so then, and so then the teacher's like, uh, yeah, everybody else here. No, no, he came from Honduras like a couple of days ago. They didn't know I came like a month and some ago or something like that. Yeah. But it was obviously I had waited a long time before I got to, to class. It mm-hmm. took forever with the vaccines and all. And um, and he said, no, he just came from Honduras. So how do you speak English? I learned it. I just learned it. Like, it just <laughs> and, and then from then on, I went to Carver Middle. I was just a magnet school, and I learned German there. So people were like, you speak English? Now you're learning German, bro? And then I went to uh, Coral Reef, and I went to the IB program, which if you know what it is, you know it's one of the hardest programs to get into. Uh, and then uh, I went to Dade because of the way my life is set up, right? So I went to Dade, and I got a full ride at Dade, obviously, and I didn't pay anything there. Um, and after I did, I went to FIU. After FIU, after like two semesters, I got frustrated with FIU. And I took a break of a year. And that break taught me something that school couldn't teach me, which was that school cannot define me because I had always been defined by school. I was also George separately. Like I have, I don't, I can't be a bad person because I don't know how to. Yeah. Like when somebody's disappointed with me, I feel so guilty. It kills me inside. And you've heard my struggles. Yeah. Like I don't like to make to disappoint anybody, and that consumes me. And so you know, I was always a straight A student. I never missed. I was never late. I was never, and that applies to even church, the work now, church now, everything I do now. Yeah. I don't even like calling out, you know. And when we plan vacations, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't want to take these off. Yeah. It like messes with me. I'm traumatized, yeah. right? But uh, but so yeah. So then FIU, I took a year off, and I realized that school wasn't all I was. It wasn't all who I was. So then I came back strong, and I, and I was like, you know what? Since I already missed a year, I might as well get two degrees instead of one. So I, I got a degree in political science and one in international relations. I thought I was gonna be a lawyer. Uh, maybe that possibility is still out there, but not at this moment in my life. I realized that I'm not moved by law 
you know, what always called me to be a lawyer was the idea of helping people. And I realized I don't need a degree to help people, to encourage people. And so, you know, people always told me, Chris, you have a gift with your words. And I was like, dude, I have an accent. You know? And, and so I realized lately that, you know, the thing that moves me most is reminding other people who they're meant to be. And so that's what I always do. Like, with Georgia and I, I was told Georgia, like, yo, I'm so proud of you. And he's like, Chris, you're whack. But it's because I see how amazing he is. Like, you know, people around me, I always try to tell them, you know, you're my hero. You're my hero. And they get annoyed because they're like, you, you say that to everybody. But it's because everybody here is a hero. You know, they don't see it, but I see it. And I think that that, that is uh, my school trip. I know it took a long time to get there. But it's, there's a certain school that school couldn't teach me. You know, and life did. And it realized me that, you know, I have the degrees because I realized if I took this year of break and I still graduated with two degrees at 23, at least in my own life, I wouldn't feel like I wasted time. Yeah. I regained vision, you know, that's yeah. what I, I saw. Yeah. So, I mean, with, with all of that, how do you see, like, your life headed now? Like, like going through all of that yeah. now in this present time? I, I think it was like a, like a shock to my whole nervous system. Because um, I wasn't used to failure. And, and to me, taking, like, quitting school, per se, for a year or so, was me failing. Because I always saw myself, what you bash mm-hmm. is what I always saw. Yeah. Which was, I'm going to high school, going to college, mm-hmm. getting a cubicle, mm-hmm. getting 2.5 kids and a mini man. Mm-hmm. Like I always saw that. And so taking that break and paying my way through school while I worked on it, it was like a, like a nerve shock to me. And now I see that, that what I do is not as important as who I do it with. Because, man, like, I don't know about you guys. You guys might say your friends are dope. But my friends are the dopest. Mm-hmm. The people around me, like, like you know, I don't get to, to boast about George because George is sitting with me all the time. But now that he's not like, sitting with me, yo, this dude, like, wow. Like, yo, half of the time, I don't feel like recording. But I show up here because his passion is contagious. It's like, yo, like, I've never seen no one so driven to lift people up that makes me feel like I have to lift him up because I'm going to forget that he also has to be up there. You know, and Eddie, oh man, Eddie's my brother. Like, he's my actual, like, flesh brother. But this dude, we're like best friends. And George knows it because George is one of our best friends too. Like, you know, Eddie and I, like, went for good or bad, we have each other. Eddie has called me at times and I've called him at times where perhaps I shouldn't be telling this to my family. But he's always been there. And then my, my brothers, like, all my best friends. And then, you know, the people around me, like Fatima. And like, it's like, yo, like, I realize that that is more important than whatever I'll ever do. So I show up to a cubicle because, I mean, I have a corporate job. And uh, and I work 40 hours plus. But my, my favorite time, or whatever movie I'm talking about, is, is the coffee. Or, like, when we're going to hang out. Or just recording. Because for me, like, I love you guys. But I don't do this for you guys. I do this because I get to hang out with my brother right here. And that, that is what drives me. And, and I think that, that that is what I see. That is what I love. Like, that's what I look up to. It's just, I look up to keep creating memories with the people I love. Like, this weekend we took a, a trip to Epcot, and I was having dinner with them. And, and then he went to a restroom, and I looked at George in the eyes, and I told him, yo, I don't ever want to take this for granted. Because I just love them. Like, I love the people around me, and I don't say it enough. I should say it more. But that is what I see about my life. I don't see what I do. I don't see my schedule. I don't see my responsibilities. I don't see my bills mm-hmm. or my debt because I, I waste a lot of money on stupid crap. Mm-hmm. You know, I just see the people and I'm like, man, this life is better than I could have played for or prayed for or asked for or paid for. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. No, man, I can't. I don't think I could even end it on a better note than that. Um, one, one last question, right? Um, so that was beautifully said. I will shout it to you. <laughs> and if you know me, you know... I'm the hardest kid out here in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I don't cry, but um but that, that was heartfelt and I feel it. Real talk, I feel it. Love and you. um, you know, I feel like a lot of us we walk around with um like we we're just talking about a certain like like mask, right? Now, um this question came about because it was interesting. Um if you can tell the world as much as you want to give, whatever, right? In the next few minutes. Who you really are 
under your mask that you wear for the world. I feel like everybody does wear a certain mm-hmm. kind of mask for the world, right? And like you said, like you said, um, at one point you said like you know you're mad loud, but with your friends, right? So if you're to say who you really are, if you if you recognize the mask, who who are you? I mean, I mean that's hard. Uh, I'm one thing I've only come to understand that in the last like two three years lately, to be honest. And I realized that um, I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm still a scared, shy, little kid from Honduras. Like um, I'm scared of disappoint, and I'm scared of fail. Like that is that is it. Like it's always been it. Like I don't I don't like victory. I don't care to win. I just can't afford to lose. And so, uh, you know, and one of the things for me, losing, the biggest thing is, is disappointing the people that I care about. So that has always driven me to be the best and to put up a front that something, to be honest, is too big to even bear. Yeah. Because, like, I realize I'm not living up to what people see in me. And so it, like, instead of making me, like, encourage me that like, they see more in me, it, it kills me because I feel like I'm letting people down. And so my mask has always been... I always have to pretend like everything is okay. Like, you know, people ask me, and I don't ever talk about myself. Like, I don't ever talk about myself. Like, George will ask me, oh, well, how's your day? It was good. You know, Fatima will ask me, how's your day? It was good. You know, and I could have probably had the worst day of my life, but I, it was good. Because I just don't care to talk about any of that. Because I feel like I have to be perfect for people. And so I've only come to understand lately that people don't relate to the perfection that I pretend to have. They relate to the failures that I go through every day and how somehow I still keep going and smiling. Like people are like, yo, why are you smiling? I don't know. But I'm here and you're here, so let's keep it moving. You know, I worry people are like, yo, I can count on Chris. Uh, a church or a home or with you, people can count on Chris. They can't count on Chris to always get it right, but they can count on that Chris will always be there. Yeah. And I realized that, that my facade was always that perfect guy. Yeah. Spoke well, did this, knew well, knew that. But honestly, I'm just somebody who, I can't promise you perfection, but I can promise you presence. I will not always get it right, but I will always be there. And I think that that's where I come to terms with. Like, you can't count on me to know it all, but you can count on me to be there for you. And that, I find peace in that. And that's real. Um, okay, so we have a few seconds. So with that being said, bro, you already know. Love, appreciate, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. So-